So, I've been doing these basic stat reviews for the Payday 2 DLC weapon packs. I have fun doing them, but the character limit on Steam reviews really makes it hard to get anything written, especially when formatting like tables takes up like half the limit. So as an excuse to start making real videos again, <coughs> I've decided to try making a video version as well. Also, it's been uh, storming for the past two days and my power is still out, so enjoy some Chad Handy Quarter audio quality and laptop footage. Let's start off this weapon pack with a Rust-12 Angry Tiger revolver. This is modeled after the RSH-12 Russian revolver, and looks like an absolute beast. The first thing to note about this Rust-12 is that it uses armor-piercing rounds, making it the second pistol in the game to do so. This also allows it to penetrate shields and body armor, much like sniper rifles or other AP weapons. This makes it great as a utility weapon for dealing with shields or Captain Winners. And looking at the stats, there's two things to note right away the damage and the ammo. The Rust-12 has the highest damage of all secondaries, barring the crossbow and explosives. This means that on death sentence, this revolver can one-shot everything except bulldozers as long as the trigger happy skill is active. Plus the rounds of penetration, so... This brings me to the downsides, which is the ammo. The Rust-12 has 15 rounds, which is 39 less bullets than other revolvers. This is also hampered by the abysmally low pickup rate, which looks like Overkill accidentally inverted the pickup percentages. Either way, at the time of recording, the Rust-12 takes 1-3 to three ammo boxes per round to refill. For reference, this is very similar to the 5.7 AP pistol, however the 5.7 also has 30 more bullets to spare. Other revolvers also have almost double the pickup rate of the Rust-12 as well. However, something nice about the Rust-12 is that unlike most other revolvers, there's actually a wide variety of modifications available. Aside from the Rust-12 DLC attachments, you have access to four additional barrel extensions, all the pistol gadgets, and almost all rifle scopes. This is quite interesting as only the Bronco and Metever have access to these gadgets, and the Bronco only gets two barrel extensions at that. My main takeaway is that the main utility of this weapon is not the penetration, but to instantly kill any enemy on death ends. Players that want penetration would be better off using either the 5.7, AP shotguns, or snipers, as they're more reliable weapons. Plus, the 5.7 can instantly kill shields on death ends anyway. I would say that this weapon is best used with pistol builds when you want to reliably instantly kill a target. Otherwise, it would be more efficient to just take a different revolver that has better reliability. Moving on, we have the KS-12 Urban Assault Rifle. This is modeled after the Shack 12 Russian Battle Rifle. It also uses the same ammo type as the Rust-12, but it doesn't have the penetration. I'ma be real with you, I don't know what to say. I don't use ARs much, except for the BEAST M308. I'll just try to provide all the facts and call it good enough. The KS-12 has the highest damage output of all full auto rifles, and has overall worse stats than most other rifles. On death sentence, it takes around 2-3 to three headshots to drop a heavy. Unless you're running the crit, zerker, overkill, anarchist build, in which case it only takes one shot, and two shots to drop the special. It's nothing special compared to the other rifles in its class. The KS-12 also has a DMR kit, which… Uh, doesn't add much. It does 42 damage more than other DMRs. This does mean that anyone running a Berserker or Overkill Ace will one-shot heavies, and putting the two together will one-shot everything else. Though remember, even the Beast M308 can do this with 42 less damage. Really, with DMRs, it's usually better just to use a sniper rifle, as you get penetration and graze. The only thing really of note is that the two barrel extensions provided are actually usable in other rifles, which is surprisingly different from most of the latest DLCs. Overall, there's nothing really special to this rifle, and is probably the most forgettable part of this DLC. Finally, we get to the Kang Arms Model 54 pistol, which is definitely the most notable part of this DLC. 
This is based off the Tokarov TT-30 pistol. On the surface, this is a pretty lackluster pistol. It is closest to the 84 damage tier pistols, which we have 8 of already. For 5 more damage, it has worse stats than every pistol in that category, and about 30 less ammo as well. It's a very bad trade-off, but this is compensated by the special feature of this weapon, the underbarrel. Okay, real talk, I'm gonna break just like the whole formality here. The underbarrel of this weapon is, and I, I just quote, an absolute fucking jank. And this is coming from the king of janky crap. So here's a normal headshot from a high damage tier shotgun with, with no buffs. A reasonable amount of damage, to be sure. And the Kang underbarrel, oh, oh. I mean, it's it's just a taser on death sense. I, it can't be doing that much more damage. Oh boy. Okay, okay, just for comparison's sake, here's a high tier shotgun with every possible damage bonus I could stack onto it. And that's doing just slightly less than a thousand more than this unboosted underbarrel. This is absolutely insane. Thankfully, that's about as high as it can, oh my God. So the basics. The underbarrel has a base damage somewhere between 814 and 858 damage, depending on which way you calculate it. This is, you know, only 100 damage lower than the China Puff. Basically, a single shot is instant death, and in Death Sends, a single headshot is enough to kill any enemy besides Winters or Bulldozers, uh, the former being left at a whopping 32 health. However, you only get three death rounds at a time which is not really a downside when the ammo pickup rate is somehow better than the Rust-12. It takes roughly only one to two boxes per round, which is quite generous. You also get three different flavors of death in the form of Basic Death, Basic Death Plus, and Basic Death Plus Plus. See, despite what you'd assume, all three of these ammo types perform almost exactly the same. First off, all three types do the exact same amount of damage, even though Fletch Rounds should be doing less damage like it does on other shotguns. Next is the complete lie about the damage ranges. See, the Honor Barrel has the exact same damage range of the Locomotive 12 gauge. I, I had to measure it with a sight, so you know, it, it might be accurate. At 10 meters, the Locomotive suffers an immediate damage drop off of 60%. With Fletch Rounds, this is extended to 20 meters, and AP Rounds basically remove fall off, except for extreme distances. However, all three ammo types on the underbarrel have the exact same damage falloff range, with a falloff of 65% damage. I don't know why this is, given how on the stats page, it literally says they have better range. This means that despite what people are saying, the AP rounds don't actually provide any range increases. One thing that is thankfully working is the special properties of the ammo types. Fletch rounds will still penetrate body armor, and AP rounds will still penetrate everything. Like your mom. I did a mom jump! Yep! Next, we need to look at how this interacts with certain skills, because, again, this weapon is jank. First off, you cannot randomly crit with the underbarrel at all. This appears to be hard-coded, and no trickery will make it work. First are the shotgun skills. Underdog Basic gives no damage bonuses, and the same goes for Shotgun Impact as well. Shotgun CQB does give you the 35% reload speed and the 25% steel sight speed bonus as long as the pistol is in underbarrel mode. Far Away gives you both the accuracy bonus and the range increase, increasing the effective range to 15 meters when ADSing. Close by Basic does not allow you to fire while sprinting, even if the underbarrel is equipped. And finally is Overkill. While the underbarrel can trigger overkill, neither the basic or ace skill will provide the 75% damage bonus. However, you do get the 80% swap speed bonus from ace. Next are the other miscellaneous skills. You will receive no bonuses whatsoever from pistol skills, and switching to the underbarrel will actually cancel out any active stack buffs that you have. This makes sense and that's how it really should be. Almost all other global weapon skills work, like Surefire, Lock and Load, and anything that provides a basic stat increase. Low Blow and Unseen Strike will provide no bonuses, as the Underbarrel cannot crit anyway. Berserker also provides no damage bonuses. Given how both Underdog, Shotgun Impact, and Overkill provide no damage bonuses, it's most likely the case that Overkill just hard-coded out any damage bonuses from applying to this weapon. Except that they messed up in this regard 
because they forgot about high value targets, which is extraordinarily janky on this weapon. Basic will provide you with the 15% damage bonus, which works exactly as you'd expect it to, and the aced 50% damage bonus also applies, which ends up completely negating the regular damage falloff of the underbarrel. But it gets worse. The falloff distance of the underbarrel is at around 10 meters, and the range for the 50% damage bonus is also at 10 meters. If we happen to stand at exactly 10 meters from the target, not only do we not take the damage fall off, but we also get the 50% damage bonus. Absolutely hilarious! Given how every other damage skill in the game is hard-coded to not work on the underbarrel, I'd say that Overkill simply forgot that this skill exists and neglected to disable it for the weapon. Actually, just reading through this right now, just like recording this, uh, I realized that you could probably use Far Away to get like an extra five meters to activate high value target. Like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of broken. And that is the jankiness that is the TT-30. This is a great pistol for Akimbo builds, as you can get the damage bonus from Overkill now without actually needing to take a shotgun. Plus, it still just instantly kills everything. While the pistol itself doesn't exactly do much, the utility of having a penetrating death cannon on demand is amazing. Basically, it's the Rust 12, but on crack. And that rounds out the weapons in this DLC. A rather mediocre assault rifle, a decent revolver, and a jank is all fuck pistol. There's a uh, uh, also charms. Yay. They're small and inoffensive, but okay, look, I'm I'm gonna be real with you. Outfits. Yeah, I'd pay for that. Gloves. I'd I'd pay for that. Skins and colors. Yeah, I'll I'd pay for that. Charms. Yep, yeah, that's enough from me, dog. Regular weapon packs that don't include extras are three dollars. Packs that do include extras, like skins or cosmetics, are an extra buck. Here's my problem with that. You got smaller pack one, you know, you got 20 extra colors. Smuggler pack two, you got 10 extra colors, okay. Eee. Smuggler pack three, you got four colors and four charms. Instead of good cosmetic content that's highly visible and modifiable, we get dinky charms that are barely noticeable. Compare this to R6 Siege, which was the game that started this whole charm craze. The vast majority are either available from loot bags, included in bundles with matching weapon and operator skins, or rewards for challenges, competitive seasons, or battle passes. Nobody is buying charms alone for themselves. In fact, most of the charms I have in Siege are for completing the weekly challenges. I'm fine with the concept of weapon charms, but if they're gonna start replacing the diminishing cosmetic content we're getting, then these weapon packs become a tougher sell. Weapon charms should really be tied to achievements, loot cards, and bonus content in packs, not as a main selling point. Hey, get 10,000 headshots? Here's a little helmet charm. Do the overgirl secret? Have a, have a little tiny drill there. These should be items locked behind achievements, like mods, masks, and patterns used to be in older DLCs. Fuck that system, I hated that system. I know these newer DLCs are basically Overkill's version of a life raft, but man, if charms become the new extra cosmetics, I'm going to feel robbed every time I buy a new DLC pack. Oh, I get it. Anyway, that's all my thoughts. Maybe I'll get off my ass long enough at some point to finish another Payday 2 video. Either way, I'll probably pop up again when another DLC drops. Or, you know, Scream Fortress is right around the corner. Gotta make another TF2 rant.